Hello everyone, this is The Nelston. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm here to talk about a general purpose level 75 hybrid poison and heavy melee build. Keep in mind, this was originally going to be made only for archers, so a lot of my analysis and commentary is going to focus specifically on the archer version of this build. However, with that being said, since you can reuse all of the armor and accessory items on other classes that are not archer, I decided to make this a more general video so that anybody who is interested in playing a lower level poison build can do so. But I will not be analyzing the specific stats of the shaman, warrior, assassin, or mage versions of this build. Alright, without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. As with most build videos, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is taking a look at the items I chose to use in this build, why I chose to use them, as well as how to obtain them and any potential alternatives in case you don't have access to those items. Now starting with the helmet, we have the Plague Mask. This is going to be used for the skill points, poison damage, and the life steal. And this can be obtained by killing the Plague Doctor in Olux. I don't think there is actually an alternative for this and it should be pretty easy to obtain given that it is a boss altar item. Next we have the crystal coil, which is going to give us crazy main attack neutral damage, decent poison, as well as a lot of skill points. And this is going to be obtained by killing the magma stream core boss in the volcanic isles. Again, there's not going to be a replacement for this item given that it is a boss altar item. You're just gonna have to go kill him. Next, we have the Pandemic Leggings, which you can obtain, I believe, from either loot running from level 66 to 76 or killing mobs in that range. And this is going to be useful because we have the Poison and the Life Steal. One thing I do want to note is that this may be a little bit difficult to find on the trade market given that it is kind of a niche pair of leggings. Uh, if you don't really want to use this, you can also use the leggings from the uh, Poison Mage build. I'll link the video in the description so you can go check that out if you need to. But I would highly recommend using the Pandemic because it just gives you a lot of really useful stats. For the boots, we have the Vine Crawlers. Now these are going to be useful because they have plus 14 skill points and plus 500 to 600 poison damage. As I mentioned before with the Pandemic, if you don't have access to Vine Crawlers because they're not available on the trade market, you can definitely replace these with another pair of boots, like for example, Philophobia from my Poison Mage build. I would highly recommend getting Vine Crawlers because they are pretty useful and they give a lot of poison and a lot of stat points that might not enable the build to work otherwise. So yeah, definitely try to get this if you can. Again, you can get this from killing mobs between level 66 and 76 or loot running in that level as well. Next, we have the rings. Now, these are going to be very replaceable. I chose to use Donners because they're easy to get. You can buy these from the Santa Island for about 13 emerald blocks each, and they give plus five stat points each, plus some fire damage, which is super helpful for doing more damage with our bow. And you can really, again, use any items you want here, but I would just recommend this because it's, well, it's nice. For the bracelet, we have Iniquity. Now, this is going to be a little bit less negotiable. I think there is an alternative that you can use. There's a legendary bracelet that gives poison damage as well, but it's going to cost you like two to three LE, so I don't know if you really want to go with that. But otherwise, you can use this. It's a little bit cheaper, and it might be hard to find, but the reason you should use this is because it gives you really good poison damage and also plus four dexterity, which is going to be nice for building your build. And finally, for the necklace, we have the Coarse Torque, which is nice because it gives you poison and strength. This can be replaced by basically anything. If you want to, you can use Durham's Amulet, which gives you an equivalent amount of strength, I believe. I'm not too sure on that one, but you will lose out on the poison. So I'd recommend getting this if you can. It shouldn't be too hard to find. All right, now I'm gonna look at all of the weapon options that you have available when you play this build. So starting with Warrior, we're going to be using the Funyet Spear, and I believe this can be obtained from the Tribal Merchant in the Darnal Jungle if you complete those quests. And you can see it's really good because it has lifesteal, it has poison, it has very slow attack speed and very high base damage. So overall, it's going to be incredibly useful, and I think this will actually last you pretty long, probably the longest out of any of these poison weapons. So definitely make sure to get one of these if you can, and of course the uh, stat points don't hurt that much either. 
Now moving on to the shaman weapon, we're going to be using the mercury bomb. And this is going to be accessible basically by loot running or by killing mobs. Or if you want to, you can also buy it off of the trade market. And this is going to be a level 57 weapon, so maybe a little bit weaker compared to some of the other options. But it is still very viable and it is the best poison option for your shamans. For mages, you're going to have two options. First, you can either use the Plague Staff from before, which is still going to work. Uh, the reason I don't favor this is because it's going to require you to sink 50 points into Intelligence, and I don't actually even know if that works with a build or not. So if you do use this, you're going to have to make an entirely separate build, which, you know, is fine, but just keep that in mind. Now, the more preferable option in this case is going to be Rotten Wood, because this will fit in with the build that I'm showing you guys, and it's a lot easier to obtain because you can just buy it off the trade market. For Assassins, we're going to be using Ricin, and this is going to be, you know, pretty typical stuff, does a lot of poison damage. Now, one nice thing about this is that it actually has mana steal and neutral spell damage, so you can actually potentially mix in some spell cycles there if you want to. Overall, uh, not really going to be using it for that, but it is nice to have. Finally, for the archer, we're going to be using Vile, and you know, the stats should be pretty self explanatory, they're very nice to have, and overall, this is going to be the best option for archers. One more thing I want to talk about with regards to weapons are some potential alternatives to items that might be a little bit harder to get. So starting with the spear, you know that the Funya is going to be a quest gated item, so you have a couple of different options. The first option you have is a Karasot Spreader, and this is nice because you can buy it from a merchant, it has high poison, has basically everything you need, so you can go with this if you want. Alternatively, you can also choose to use a Turmoil. This has a little bit lower poison damage, but it does have better heavy melee damage. So you can kind of, you know, pick and choose depending on which playstyle you're more interested in. But again, this is a hybrid build, so realistically, you should be using both. Next up for the daggers, um, you don't really have any other options. I mean, you could use this one if you want, but uh, yeah, it's not very good. For shamans, I think you're going to have the most alternative options because you can see that you have either Rusted Root, which is actually quite feasible in terms of replacing Mercury Bomb, because if you look at the fourth spell cost and the second spell cost, you can cut those down a lot, even without Intelligence, which means that you could cast Uproot and you could cast Hall a bunch of times to do damage without necessarily having to get too close to your enemies. And you can see it doesn't require anything besides Dexterity and Strength, which are already accounted for in our build. Alternatively, you could use Lethality, and the reason you'd want to use this over something like Rusted Root or Mercury Bomb is because it has Life Steal, but I mean, you're playing Shaman, you should be able to heal from your totem, so I don't really think this is that big of an issue. And also, this is going to have super fast attack speed, so you'd be losing a lot of potential heavy melee DPS. Finally, for bows, um, unfortunately, you're not really going to have too many choices. Now, you could go with something like Contamination if you want to. Uh, this does have Exploding, which means that it will spread the poison to other mobs. You could go with something like Strangle Vine, although this is not going to do nearly as much poison damage. This is more so going to be for people who are interested in the heavy melee side of things, since it has, you know, better base damage for heavy melee and better lifesteal, I believe. Okay, now that we've talked about the items, let's go ahead and cover some of the stats. So one thing you'll notice is that you have a massive amount of skill points left over after you've distributed everything for your build items. One thing I do want to note though is that the dexterity I believe is a little bit wrong. So it should actually take 26 manually assigned dexterity instead of 25. I don't know why this is broken, maybe wind builder is not updated. But yeah, you should definitely make sure to check that. And that will actually leave you with 72 skill points instead. Now personally, I like to sink all of this into defense to give me 97 defense because you'll see that boosts my effective HP from 4000 all the way up to 8600. Again, pretty glassy for a level 75 build, but I do think that you will see it's not going to be too much of an issue given well, the stat right here. Let's go ahead and now talk about the overall build stats. With the effective HP, you're going to have 8.6k with a total HP of 4.4k. There's not going to be any difference between effective HP with and without agility because you have zero agility. 
The earth defenses are good, thunder defenses are good, water defenses you're going to be a little bit weaker on, so be careful. Fire is going to be good, and air is all right. Your mana regen is going to be negative one every five seconds, but you can counter that with decent mana steal. The reason I'm mentioning mana in a heavy melee poison kind of hybrid build is because you will actually end up using your spells more often than you think in order to proc poison. Health regen wise, don't really need to worry about that spell. Again, don't need to worry. Raw melee damage, you're going to get a lot of damage output. Melee damage percentage, no big deal. This build is going to have 600 lifesteal per second with an effective lifesteal of around 1,200. And if you notice, your effective HP is about 8,600. So you'll be healing quite a bit of health every single time you use it. If I'm not mistaken, that should be something like 17 to 18% of your health every time you land a hit. You're going to have 20% exploding, which is going to be nice because that does mean that one out of five mobs that you kill will blow up and damage mobs around them. And this should also proc poison onto them. So yeah, you get kind of a neat chain effect. Now, damage percentages wise, you can see why I chose to powder the middle slot with earth. Yeah, you just get a 57% earth damage. Absolutely huge. On the damage side of things, we have a single hit average of 3.4k per shot with an average GPS of around 1.7k. And the poison tick, though, is going to bring your average GPS up to almost 4,000 DPS, which is pretty good for level 75. This build, though, can be even better because with Courage, you'll see that your build goes up a little bit in damage. But what I really want to point out is the fact that your poison tick goes from 2,200, which is already pretty good, to an astounding 3,700, almost doubling it. And with that, you have a new average DPS of close to, yes, 5.6k DPS. Pretty nutty for level 75 and just, you know, really fun to play with. If you choose to use higher level fire powders for God knows what reason, you can bring this up to just ludicrous amounts of damage. I mean, 5.5k poison tick, 2000 DPS, you're gonna be doing 7.5k DPS at level 75, just absurd. Back to the game, we're going to talk about how to use this build effectively and then show you how to use it against Bob, which is going to be a pretty challenging at level fight for level 75, but I'm going to show you how to make it an absolute joke. So to start, you're going to be using your main attack as the main source of damage. So you just shoot him and you'll see that it does some pretty great damage right off the bat just from the main attack. But you also get the poison proc, which then deals an additional amount of damage. And one thing that you can do if you want to hit a large group of mobs without some lag is you can use your abilities. So you can use arrow storm. One thing you can also do is you can also proc with escape. So if you do the whole like whole shift thing, you'll see that it also procs it. Of course, using arrow shield will also do it. So that is also an option. And finally, of course, bomb arrows are a really great way of dealing with a large horde of enemies. So now we're just going to show you I can kill citizens super easily. So if you ever wondered, oh, how do I kill citizens in cities? You can use this build and it just absolutely tears them a new one. You can also use your spells just to augment the damage further. Yeah, these guys don't stand a chance. All right, now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and face Bob head on and just show you how absurd this build can be in the right hands. Let's get into it.
All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you have any ideas for future builds, make sure to join my Discord and leave me a link to your build. Otherwise, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like. If you hated it, leave a dislike. Subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.